the final trailer was released for No Time to Die. And just a little bit of background context, like obviously it's a James Bond film, the final James Bond film with Daniel Craig as James Bond. And if I remember correctly, this is one of like the first films to be delayed because of COVID-19. Release dates have been all over the place since you know last year, mm-hmm. and un- really until the last month or so. Because like right now, the film is slated to come out on October 8th of this year. And now, uh, this isn't so much about the movie itself, but is it just me, or does the the MGM lion in the trailer look kind of weird? Uh, I never really noticed that it looked weird. <laughs> I mean, this is already a weird way to start the episode by talking about a lion <laughs> and a <the> logo. <laughs> No, because you had, like, the original, like, little line roaring. Then, like, this one looks, like, more CGI. Like, I don't know. It just hit my eye kind of fun. I'm like, ah, oh, that's different. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, well, Darius, are, are you that much of a James Bond fan? I love James Bond. My dad got me into James Bond. I really like James Bond. I like, um... Really? You know, okay, because, like, I didn't, I, I don't remember hearing you talk about it. So, I, that was not the response I thought I was going to get. <laughs> yeah, I really like James... I mean, is, is it me... I mean, compared to me as a DC Marvel fan, no, nowhere near. Or Star Wars, no, nowhere near. But I do enjoy James Bond. I do enjoy those movies, spy thrillers, up my alley. I really like it. Very entertaining. Um, However, this last movie, I'm honestly, I'm not too excited about it. Because I just think I'm, I don't know. It's just, like, the only, the biggest reason as to why I am excited for it is because of the actor from Mr. Robot. I absolutely love him. I can't wait to see what he does in this in James in this James Bond film, but uh, overall, it's like I'm excited, but not overly crazy excited. I'm just like you know what when it comes out, I'll see it that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean it does look interesting, interesting it does look action packed like any James Bond movie should be, and uh, I'm really mm-hmm. curious to see where they really go with. What number is this in the James Bond franchise? Like, <laughs> I lost count. I don't, know. I don't know, like, how many overall since, like, you know, the Sean Connery days. But I think, let's see, with Daniel Craig, Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, Spectre, and this one. So this is the fifth one with Daniel Craig as James Bond. Absolutely crazy. So, I mean, honestly, it's, it's going to be, I mean, hopefully other James Bond fans are excited for it. I know the last couple ones, people weren't too fond of him. I, if I remember correctly, um, but yeah, let's... I mean, Spectre was like kind of a mixed bag, from what I understood. I never watched yeah. Spectre. Skyfall was very Skyfall was very popular. Skyfall was very very well received. Like that was considered like an Oscar contender for best picture that year. Like I remember, I remember that. And if it's one thing, like c- touching on your point when you said about, um, you know, the guy from Mr. Robot, Marami Malik, he also played Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody. He's the villain in this film, and. If it's one thing that the last couple of James Bond movies seem to have gotten right, again, Spectre is kind of based on quote, speculation. Um, they got Christoph Waltz to be the villain in that movie. Christoph Waltz is an awesome actor. Skyfall had Javier Bardem, you know, who was, again, he gave one of the best performances of his career. He was very, very well received, too. He was another Oscar contender yeah. for that year as well. So if it's one thing that the Bond movies seem to be on a good streak with is the villain, especially when you throw in someone as talented as Rami Malek. Yeah, exactly. Like he, when when I heard that he was announced, I was like, you know what? I'll see it because of him. I I I really like him as an actor, so I was like, you know what? I'll see it because of him. But other than that, to me, as far as first day release or like going to the theater to see it, that I'm not too sure on. But like, I am interested to see where this franchise goes. And not only that, because this is apparently Daniel Craig's last, you know, showing as James Bond. Who's gonna be the next? Uh, actor to take on that role or do they actually end it off at this one well listen if they well this will probably be his last yeah this is his last film as james bond and i always i definitely liked daniel craig as james bond so this kind of being his last film as james bond like feels kind of weird because like obviously you had the james bonds from the past but i feel like the ones that um the james bond films that, that i remember coming out like you know while i was really watching movies and whatnot were the Daniel Craig James Bond movie. So it kind of feels like a weird end of an era. And as far as, like, who the next one will be, like, I remember, like, hearing rumblings a while ago about, like, you know, who was next in line. I remember I remember hearing Idris Elba um, to possibly be the next James Bond. I don't know if he um, rejected that yet, but I remember when I heard that, I'm like, he'd actually be really, really good. 
He'd be yeah, really good. I heard, I heard that, that it mass- was going to be either Idris Elba or even a black female James Bond. But again, we'll have to wait and see with that. Um, you know, at, once this movie comes out, I- after it comes out, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like at least with Idris Elba, like, again, there's always been a very masculine quality to James Bond, right? And I feel like Idris Elba channels that perfectly. But another thing that I always, um, again, now that I'm thinking about this, that I've respected about the James Bond um, series, or at least, like, these last few films from what I remember, the action sequences, like, they always feel big, but they never feel dumb. Like, they always feel, Mm -hmm. you know, like, they, they make sense. Like, I don't lose brain cells watching a James Bond action scene. Whereas when I watched Fast and Furious 9, like, I wish it did a brain cell count before I watched that movie and after I watched that movie. Because to quote my friend Mike Scudero, I don't know if he's listening, but it melted my brain. It was so fucking bad. Um, yeah. Whereas opposed to this, again, the action and James Bond and really just a story overall. Like, yeah, they're, like, you know, your typical spy thrillers in a lot of ways. But, again, James Bond, like, you know, really um, set that off, the whole spy thriller thing. And... Like, I always just had a lot more respect for James Bond. And again, I guess I should probably mention, like, what No Time to Die is actually about. And again, this is according to IMDb. James Bond has left active service. His piece is short-lived when Felix Leiter, an old friend from the CIA, turns up asking for help, leading Bond onto a trail of, of a mysterious villain armed with a dangerous new technology. So certain things about that feel kind of vague, but, like, the idea of, like, Bond coming out of, you know, his so-called retirement. Like, because, like, let's be real. When someone like that goes into retirement, right? Do they ever really stay in retirement? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <mean>. no. <laughs> yeah, no, of course not. It's like, oh, thanks for respecting my wishes. I really do appreciate that. So, all in all, like, I- I'm definitely, I'm looking forward to this one. I kind of want to watch the other Daniel Craig James Bonds before, so that way I can just, like, rebuild that, I guess, emotional attachment to everything, so that way I can um, appreciate No Time to Die a bit more when it comes out. So, it's got, you know, it's got a decent-looking cast, too. You got Anna de Armas, you got Ray Fiennes again, and, of course, we're Ernie Malik as the villain. The movie's gorgeous to look at, too, from what we've seen so far, which is, again, that's another thing that I've always respected about the um, Daniel Craig James Bond films. But I also noticed, too, this movie has a two-hour and 43-minute runtime, and I'm not sure how to feel about that. What do you think? Oh, I mean, as long as it feels as if it's going pretty fast, I think I'll be fine. But if it if it's slow, if it drags, if it's uninteresting, then I will have a problem. But it's James Bond, and I don't think that's going to be a big problem. So if it's two hours, however long it is, I'll see it, whatever. I think it's just a matter of how I feel about it during and afterwards and, you know, that sort of thing. So I don't think the runtime per se, like, you know, is that important? I mean, I've watched... Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is like what four hours long, and that felt fast, and it really, it really went through, in my opinion. Um, and I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. So I mean, it depends. It definitely depends on the movie and how they want to pace it and everything. So I mean, but knowing James Bond, I think it's gonna go by pretty, pretty quickly. I would hope so. Like I just hope there's enough going on again in the story to justify that two-hour and 43-minute runtime. Because, again, I'm not intimidated by the long runtime. Anytime I hear about a movie being long, I'm like, all right, awesome. Like, I watched The Irishman twice. That's three. That's a three-and-a-half-hour movie. But, like, looking at that, and, again, this may be an unpopular opinion that I've discussed on the show before, yeah. I thought the runtime was justified just because of how much the story had to cover in order for that payoff at the end to really be worth it. So, and, again, I, I'm not saying that, that No Time to Die won't do that, but... It, if they're going to have that kind of runtime, of course, it better be worth it. But at the same time, it does of make course. sense for it to be this long because it's the last James Bond film in this particular James Bond series. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, like I said, it's going to be interesting. Let's see how James Bond fans feel about it, too. And uh, when it comes out, I'll I'll be there. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, so, so will I. Are you going to be seeing this in IMAX? No. Mm-mm. No, this is not an IMAX movie no. for me. Okay. All right. So again, for for all you guys that are still with us, what do you think of the no time of the you know prospects with no time to die? Do you think it's just been too de- delayed too many times? Where you know you still actually care? Are you still going to see it no matter what? Or are you that hard, die hard of a James Bond fan? Leave your thoughts wherever it is that you can. 